Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal, and this is Our Next Make. Creating and appreciating art has always been an important part of our lives. Art inspires us, and it gives us a creative outlet to express ourselves. And we just love how rejuvenating it can be. And that's why this week we're creating a simple and elegant palette for painting with water. Chinlu found this amazing material that once wet, quickly evaporates water. It's called diatomite. We actually bought it as a shower mat, but it came with four coasters, so we're going to build our palette around this small piece. Alright, to figure out the layout, we're going to just experiment by placing the objects where we think they should be on the palette, and then sort of interacting with them, picking up the brush, getting some water, painting. And I noticed that as a righty, this is kind of in the way, so let's, let's try it on this side. You know, does it, does it feel better that way? That's much better. Um, you know, what if the brush were over here? Uh, instead of on the bottom, uh, picking it up, that works. I'm just going to take a couple quick measurements. So approximately 10 by 5. Now we can jump into CAD to fine tune the design. A SOLIDWORKS for Maker's license comes with XDesign, a browser-based CAD tool that lets me design whenever and wherever I want. Here I'm working on a tablet to model the wood and figure out exactly where I want the tile to be placed. I just had this great idea. I wondered what if instead of using this glass bowl for the water, I actually tried to turn a rock into a bowl. So what I'm going to do is go through this collection of rocks that we have from various hikes that we've gone on over the years uh, and see if I can find a rock that makes sense. Um, you know, I just have to uh, find a, a rock that maybe makes the most sense. This one jumps out at me uh, as, a, as a good candidate. I I'm thinking if I just grind down the bottom so it's nice and flat, then I can kind of grind a recess in here and scoop it out like a bowl. To flatten the bottom of this stone, I'm going to use this tile saw. But if you don't have one, don't worry, I'll show you how you can use a Dremel to achieve the same result in a minute. Tile saws are pretty awesome. They use a diamond blade to cut away, or technically a braid, material. They're actually rather safe because the blade doesn't have aggressive teeth that can cut you. Of course, you do need to wear safety glasses to protect your eyes and take care when cutting irregularly shaped objects like this rock, but they are super fun. I cut a flat spot on the bottom and then started to remove a few high spots on the top. Now I'm going to use a Dremel with a grinding wheel attachment to slowly shape this into a bowl. I was able to make reasonable progress with this grinding stone, but at one point, I forced it too much and it split in half and flew across the room, reminding me why I always wear safety glasses. So I bought a set of diamond grinding wheels, which worked really well. As an experiment, I didn't use water this time. This created a lot of dust, so I wore an RZ mask and had a fan blowing the dust away from my face. If you have any tips for grinding stone, please share them in the comments so we can all learn together. I want to cut a recess in the wood that this rock can rest in, but instead of just drilling a round hole, I want to try and get it to be the exact same shape as the rock. Here's what I'm going to do. With the rock laying flat on the table, I'll place the flat side of a pencil on the table as well and scribe a line all the way around the perimeter. Then I'll take the rock over to our scanner and scan an image of it. I'll make sure to put a few rulers on the scan bed too so I know exactly how big the rock is. Now I can insert that scan into XDesign and use it to design the pocket for the rock. I'll use these handy on-screen controls to line up with my ruler marks and scale the image to the exact size. Now I'll trace my pencil line using the spline tool. I can drag the points around as well as the spline handles to get the exact shape I want. While I'm here, I'll also model a recess for the brush and an opening to make it easier for your fingers to grab it. Speaking of the brush, I want to breathe new life into this old brush. I'm going to start by cutting it down to size and then scraping off all the flaking paint. Using a set of pliers here to cut it to length did end up chipping a piece off the handle, so I had a bit of extra sanding to do to even it out. Next time, I'll use a small saw, or at least score the cut with a utility knife first. The paint came off really easily just by scraping it with a utility knife. A bit of sanding prepped the wood for some finish. I applied three coats of polycrylic by simply dipping the handle into it and then clamping it to a makeshift series of clamps so it could dry upright. While the brush dried, I started to make the wooden pallet. The first thing I did was glue up a few scraps of oak from our seed box project. Be sure to check out that video to see how we turned reclaimed hardwood flooring into usable lumber. As always, I waited about an hour and then used a chisel to remove the squeeze out before it fully dried. Then I went into the shop and cross cut the board to length and ripped it to width at the table saw. I quickly sanded the top and the bottom with a random orbit sander and then attached it to my CNC. I cut each pocket individually so I could test how each item fit and tweak the size if necessary. If you don't have access to a CNC but want to make a project like this for yourself, you could lay out your cut lines by hand, 
or use paper templates, and then use a jig or freehand route the pockets. Just remember, do the best you can with what you have. With everything fitting well, I popped the pallet off of the CNC, quickly sanded it once more to break the hard edges, and then applied a coat of butcher block oil. Now we can place all the pieces in their homes and put the art pallet to use. I love how this project turned out. There's such beauty in its simplicity, and it's really just a piece of art to help other people make more art. Yeah, this project for me checked so many boxes. I loved how it was high tech with the new material and the use of CNC, but I also love how it was low tech and primitive with carving a stone, which I'd never done before. It was very rewarding. And of course, I love that we got to continue to upcycle materials by using the floorboards uh, that we recycled a couple weeks ago and breathing new life into an old paintbrush. It was really great. And if this project inspired you to do something similar, please tell us about it. Also, please consider sharing the video with someone who might find this interesting as well. And until then, we'll see you on our next make.